Today I am introducing the GuardLink on machine interface. This interface module will bring safety inputs and diagnostic and troubleshooting information into a GuardLogix 5380 or 5580 safety programmable controller. The subject of today's video is the 432ES IG3 GuardLink interface. 432 is the bulletin number, ES is for Ethernet IP safety, I is for input, G is for guard link, and 3 is for 1, 2, 3 safety inputs rated up to SIL 3 or Category 4 PLE. Starting from the top, the module has two 4-pin M12 megabit Ethernet ports that can be used in a star, linear, or device level ring Ethernet topology. For this demonstration, one Ethernet port will be used and the other will remain capped. Underneath the Ethernet ports are three small covers where the IP address switches are located. Though the device ships DHCP, boot P enabled, many users choose to use a 192.168.1 machine network. This module has been set to the network address 192.168.1. 32 by setting the hundreds to zero, tens to three, and ones to two. The three four pin M12 plugs are labeled channel zero, channel one, and channel two. These are the three guard link safety inputs. A four pin M12 trunk cable is used to connect the guard link interface to the first guard link tap of each channel. Each guard link channel is capable of monitoring 32 devices. Guard link system design requires choosing the proper guard link tap and patch cords for each safety input. As devices are added, voltage drop and current usage must be calculated. Integrated Architecture Builder is a great free tool for designing guard link systems and tracking critical system variables, amongst many other things. See rockwallautomation.com for more information on Integrated Architecture Builder. The final two plugs on the bottom of the module are for 24 volt DC power. DC power in and DC power out to the next device. Here in the lab, I use whatever 24 volt DC that is available. But please note that to comply with the European Low Voltage Directive, Protective Extra Low Voltage, or PELV, power supply is required. And to meet Underwriters Laboratory, or UL, requirements, a National Electrical Code Class II power supply is required. The power supply may be the only wiring in a guard link system where pluggable patch cords are not used. Interesting enough, this is the only place where I made a wiring error. So let's look closely at the power supply wiring. The GuardLink interface only uses module input power coming in on pins 2 and 3, or the white and blue wire of a typical power cable. The output power on pins 1 and 4, or the brown and black wire of a typical power cable, is not required for this module, but passed to the next module if present. This wiring convention follows other on-machine I.O. products, but may be different from some sensor and component power cable wiring. When all connections have been made to the GuardLink interface, verify that any unused connections have the caps properly installed to maintain the IP66, 67, and even the IP69 rating of the module. Maybe later we can test the module with some high-pressure water. When the power is applied to the GuardLink interface, the GuardLink input channels will flash red until correctly configured and connected to a GuardLogix controller. Even without GuardLogix connected and configured, a preliminary checkout can be made. All GuardLink taps should show an illuminated red GuardLink symbol. Taps with safety inputs that are indicating a run ready state, like e stop not pressed, non locking guard doors closed, and locking guard doors closed and locked should have the input LED flashing green. Now that the GuardLink module has been wired and input devices connected to the GuardLink trunks, we are ready to configure the GuardLink system in Logix Designer. Configuring GuardLogix is a topic for another video.
This concludes the introduction of the 432 ESIG3 GuardLink interface module. Thanks for watching, and hey, let's be careful out there.